What's going on guys? This is Rob and you read that right. Dr. Doom's X-Men dominate the X-Men. I know it sounds crazy. It's amazing. Check this out. So this opens up in the very early days of Jonathan Hickman's House and Powers of X, which is to say when you had Charles Xavier and Magneto and Moore McTaggart, a character that Marvel fumbled worse than a high school guy trying to ask out a college girl, right? When they're all together and you initially have Xavier who broadcasts to the world, right? At the beginning of all this, for those of you guys who didn't follow follow House of Powers of X. When Krakoa was originally formed as a safe haven for the mutant population, Xavier made this broadcast to the world and was like, allow all your mutants to leave or there's going to be consequences, right? It was really, really cool. But one of the things that happened that we didn't know about is that in the midst of this, right? Xavier says, humans of planet Earth, I am the mutant Charles Xavier and I bring you a message of hope. And then this voice comes out of nowhere and says, I've been waiting for you to announce yourself, right? You're not powerful enough to speak to the world at once. So I'm positing that you're using Cerebro. And frankly, you're not that confident. So I'm going to make another supposition that you're standing beside our old friend, Eric. And when you have Mora who asks like, is something wrong? And this guy responds and says, I am not nothing, I am doom. And it's really cool because there's this kind of like back and forth conversation. Now, I think it also needs to be said, Dr. Doom has his own version of Cerebro. How far reaching this is, I don't know. Traditionally in Marvel Comics, Cerebro was used by Xavier and even Cerebro, right, with an A. It was used by Xavier to either scan the world of the mutant population, influence all the minds of all the mutants across the world, but it had like vast applications. It even became sentient once in one of the weirdest storylines that Marvel ever had. But I don't know what Dr. Doom's version of Cerebro can do, but it does allow him to to seemingly override the telepathic abilities of Charles Xavier, which does make sense, right? Considering how intelligent Dr. Doom is, as well as how powerful he is, it was really only a matter of time before he overrode the telepathic abilities of Xavier. And so the thing here is that like literally Xavier is like, I'm about to address the entire world, Doom, right? Not just you. So as impressed as I am that you can talk back, and then there's a little bit of banter that kind of goes back and forth. And what Doom really just kind of says here is this whole grand scheme you have of like the mutant population residing on Krakoa and all that kind of stuff, it's born from a desire to achieve greater good. But the reality here is it's going to end in fire and death. There's no way this comes out well for the mutant population for any number of reasons, but your tenuous alliances with the various nations that exist out there will be just that tenuous. And when the time comes, humanity will make a move. They will strike against the mutant population and that'll be it. Now, the cool thing here is that much like other nations like the United States and Russia and so on and so forth, that Latveria does have mutants within its own nation. But Dr. Doom, while he doesn't necessarily control them with an iron fist, and in fact, you'll see what kind of manipulations he does in order to sort of keep them under control, that he's just like, they're not going to leave. One, because they don't want to. And two, even if they did, I wouldn't let them, right? That's not going to happen. And so you basically fast track to what's going on in Marvel Comics right now with like, the whole fall of X event, humanity making its move against the mutant population, right? Hosts of mutants just being killed off all over the place. And we get this kind of uh, adjustment here, right? Like week one, month one, year one. And so seemingly it's been about a year since like the beginnings of House and Powers of X, right? All that stuff that had gone down. And these mutants here, right? These five who are ridiculously powerful, they are all under the control of doom. One part by brainwashing, but also because of loyalty. And that's one of the most important things to understand here, right? The, the best indication of how doom views his people, right? And how people operate under doom and why these mutants are serving him comes by way of, oh my God, Jonathan Hickman's Avengers of New Avengers, son, 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 right? You guys remember that whole scene when like Name of the Submariner goes to Dr. Doom and they have that conversation, right? Because when the incursion started, Name of the Submariner went with the Illuminati. The Illuminati weren't willing to do what needed to be done. So he sided with Thanos and then Thanos and his guys just turned bloodlusted and were just destroying worlds for the sake of it, as opposed to destroying alternate Earths to save the main Marvel universe. There's this point when Namor and Doom are having this conversation and literally Doom says like, do you believe that the citizens of this country couldn't kill me if they chose to, right? But I keep them protected. I keep them safe. And he says, so before they go to bed at night and pray to whatever God they believe in, they give thanks to me. And that's true. It's the most 
arrogant thing to say ever, and probably the greatest Dr. Doom line that's ever been, with the exception of what came after that, which I think was even better, right? It was absolutely amazing. But like, it's how people in Latveria view Dr. Doom. Is he like this guy who's more or less a villain? Basically, but he keeps his people protected. And to them, that's all they care about. Seeding loyalty is the most important thing for Dr. Doom. And that's why he tells his mutants, a time is going to come, right? With the entire collapse of the mutant population in Krakoa basically in ruin, a time's going to come when the X-Men are going to arrive here and they're going to kidnap you. And when that happens, remember who saved you. Remember who brought you freedom and who kept you safe from all the humans out there that are wiping out all those mutants. And so then we jump to basically the ending of the last issue of the X-Men when Wolverine and Kitty Pride and Miss Marvel Kamala Khan show up here in Latveria. And immediately these mutants are sent after them. Now, in terms of what they can do, right? There's some that are explained incredibly well and some that are not, right? The really big guy, his name is Slag, right? Literally his blood is magma and his skin is rock, right? There's one called the Dreamer, who's basically one of a set of twins and that he has the ability to enter into the dreams of people. The reason why this is so amazing for Dr. Doom is because once that ability is achieved to its full totality, this guy will be able to walk in and out of individuals' dreams while they sleep and give that information to Dr. Doom. Imagine if Dr. Doom had all the secrets of Charles Xavier or all the secrets of Magneto or even the different world leaders that existed out there. Imagine how much control he could have. Now the other one is Iron Cloak, right? She's the other twin and she has the ability to instill invulnerability by touching people. The issue is we don't really know how long lasting it is. Now Nerium is somebody he says, my eyes are upon her without wavering. The weather is fair now, but I question her allegiances after the change of the season, i.e. once the entirety of the mutant population collapses, can I rely on her to stay a part of my group? Or will she branch off and eventually do her own thing, potentially even join the X-Men? Now, after that, you have Volta Spear, and he says she's the finest of them, right? The gift of her Doom Spear has bonded us. She could be an heir. And in fact, we'll find out just how powerful she is. And then the last one, whose name we don't know, Doom simply says his powers are too volatile to control at the moment. And so he shall remain enthralled until desperate measures are called for. It's Dr. Doom's ace in the whole. No clue who this guy is. The fanboy in me really hopes it's like some version of like Matthew Malloy or like Clyde Wincham or someone like that. Just some ridiculously OP reality warper. Probably not, but I'm hoping that it is. But when the fight breaks out between these mutants, right? Dr. Doom's X-Men and the regular X-Men, these guys get crushed. I mean, they just get rolled so bad. The first one who steps up is like, Volta. Now, the cool thing about this is that we end up learning by way of her backstory that when Wolverine goes to like slash the spear that she has, that like it just electrocutes the heck out of her, right? Now, one of the things that's interesting about this, and this is kind of a change that I feel like is being made by Jerry Dugan, who's writing it, is that Wolverine is seemingly unable to cut through the spear because it's made of vibranium. Now, as we know, the only material that can seemingly cut through vibranium is like anti-metal vibranium or just like Wolverine's adamantium. And that's it, right? Like everything else cannot hold a candle to the power of vibranium, but Wolverine should be able to cut through this. The response that we get here is that Kamala Khan realizes it's vibranium and Dr. Doom says the finest vibranium, not like the low quality shield, stilt legs and assorted refuse that you're trained to dodge. Now, some of you guys might be asking yourselves, how in the world did Dr. Doom get his hands on vibranium? One of the things to know here is that it seems like Jerry Doom Dugan is tapping into the events of Doom War. But one of the cool things about this, and I don't remember whether or not Doom War was undone by Secret Invasion in 2015. I haven't been, I'm not current on Black Panther, full transparency here. <laughs> so I don't know what all's happening in that comic. But at the end of Doom War, all vibranium across the earth was rendered inert. It was just useless chunks of rock, right? Because Dr. Doom used all that vibranium to basically make himself God temporarily. And it was the only way to defeat him. 
And so it's one of those things where like, maybe they brought it back. I'm not 100% sure. If you know, post in the comments and let me know, right? That way I'm informed about what's going on. But the thing about this is that while Wolverine's of course not destroyed, he is like burnt to a crisp. But that's when you end up picking up with like the nature of Volta and simply learning that at some point along the line, when her powers manifested, we're not really told that it was done through puberty. It seems to be a little bit after that, that she basically had the ability to control lightning. She literally was, living lightning and Dr. Doom showed up to her with the vibranium sphere and said this will enable you to control your powers now one of the things to know is that it is all psychological what it does is it gives her a focusing point right a focal point and with that focal point she can now control her abilities with enough training she wouldn't need it right she would just be able to control them you know however it is that she wants to but for the time being Dr. Doom appears here as a kind of leader of sorts right like a mentor and then brings her into the fold now, the next person after that, and what's really cool is Kitty Pride goes to make a move against Volta. And what seems to happen here is Volta uses her electricity to subdue Kitty Pride. Now, I don't know if Kitty Pride was intangible at this point in time. It looks like she wasn't, but again, one of the things to know is that Kitty Pride can make her weapons tangible and keep herself intangible at the same time. It's one of the coolest elements of her character, which has really been showcased in Fall of X, which is why she's so dope. But that's why it's hard to tell. Conventional wisdom would lead us to believe Kitty Pride is tangible and that's how the power worked. But wouldn't it be a cool adjustment here if Volta could actually hurt Kitty Pride even though she's intangible. That'd be pretty awesome. But following that, you literally have just like Slag who runs up on Kamala Khan. Now at that moment, Wolverine goes and attacks him, but it's not enough to destroy him because Slag doesn't exist by conventional means. I mean, having magma for blood, it's not enough to like melt Wolverine's adamantium or anything like that, but he doesn't have like a particular heart that you can stab, right? You can't like slash his gut open and like his insides come spilling out. It doesn't really work that way, right? The other thing about this is that even in that conflict, the twins are watching this whole thing happen. Now, as we talked about earlier, right? The twins are kind of viewed by Dr. Doom as like his heirs, right? His protégés. The ones that he prizes above everybody else and so even where like they want to step in doom is simply like no just watch watch and learn because that's the most important thing that you can do watching how the x-men fight it's how everybody who's ever been able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the x-men has learned right watching them fight and so following that like Nerium shows up and then attacks him now Nerium is kind of like dr doom's version of like black tom cassidy basically meaning she can control plant life and she is literally quote unquote as she refers to it the life of latveria right like basically she's a spirit of the land she can control the very land itself so her vines can be used to heal they can be used to take people's powers away anything that you can imagine plant life being used for she can do it even probably creating all kinds of pheromones and things that are not naturally occurring but it's enough to subdue Wolverine and take Wolverine out and then Kitty Pride as well and so what ends up happening is that there's a kind of ceasefire that ends up taking place right where Wolverine's like okay like this is it right like this team's literally dominated us let's talk <laughs> right and so it's one of those things where like the mutants tell him like we're free here right like we don't have to worry about sentinels and things like that but like we are free in this place and the response of wolverine is okay fine then we'll leave you with your ruler and be on our way and the response of doom is i'm afraid you cannot leave until you've dined with doom because dr doom is the guy who will absolutely trash you thrash you right like when you face dr doom you are going to be petrified terrified horrified humidified but then he'll turn around and invite you to dinner he'll turn around like he will beat the crap out of you and invite you for pancakes right straight up prince playing basketball from Chappelle show that's literally what this is and the cool thing about this is that this basically grants them a parlay it's a way for these two groups to communicate and find what the other's intentions are and one of the things that like slag brings up and even volta brings up here is the fact that the reality of what's going on out there is yes humanity is attacking the mutant population but humanity and even orcus isn't foolish enough to invade latveria because dr doom by himself given the amount of power that he has at his disposal to say nothing of all the doom bots which 
are arguably equally powerful to him, depending on who's writing the story. They would more than hold their own against the Sentinels of Orcus. Orcus would have to bring out an army of Nimrods, and even then there's no guarantee that they would win. What I'm saying here is that it would be a fool's errand, right? They may come out on top, but at what cost? So they simply just don't launch an attack against Doctor Doom because it's the smart thing to do. Because of that, these mutants are safe here. And even Doctor Doom kind of posits himself and his forces posit themselves as like, maybe you guys should come here. Consider this place to be your safe haven, right? Ask Doctor Doom for asylum. But the thing about this is that in the midst of this conversation, Doom simply says, Krakoa was destined to fail, right? Charles was not ready for the crown upon his head. I knew my Latverians who shared your genetic lineage were in danger, so I closed my borders to you. Now they are alive when your people, where are they, right? They're not anywhere, they're not here. The answer to what happens next is a gift I'm not ready to give. But if you have lived good lives, then perhaps you can call your friends to your side before you are destroyed. And he says, as for the last Krakoan, Xavier is in jail of his own making. Either he will destroy himself or he'll emerge as a much more interesting person. And so he says, be gone by dawn, doom bids you good evening. And so it's one of these things where like all that's really left here are the X-Men and Doom's X-Men. And that's where they say like, maybe you can ask for asylum here, right? I mean, we're not leaving, but maybe you can ask for asylum. But one of the things that did take place here, and this is one of the things it's cool. The X-Men have earned the respect of Doom's forces. And so while they say, we're not going to leave this place, right? This is a safe haven. And honestly, there's no reason for us to leave. If the time comes when a full-scale war between the human population and the mutant population happens, which is to say, all you mutants are over here and all the humans are over there and you guys are just charging at each other towards some center line, we will be on your side you can count on us to join your cause. And that's it, right? Because literally like the X-Men leave, they go back to New York City to their base of operations where they look for Sink and the other members of the team, only to find out the whole place is just a bloodbath, right? It's been ransacked and who knows what happened to their teammates. With that being said, guys, we're gonna bring this to an end. If you need to get caught up on Fall of X, make sure you click this link to the playlist and I will catch you all later. Peace.